Lecture 7.1, The Integral as Net Change. Most of the opening slides in this lecture series are from our travels around the country. However, this picture of bees at a magnolia tree was taken in our front yard. A honeybee makes several trips from the hive to a flower garden. The velocity graph is shown below. Apparently this bee can start and stop instantly. What is the total distance traveled by the bee? So the bee travels 200 feet from the hive towards the flower garden, stops for a short time, then travels 200 feet back, stops at the hive for a short time, travels 200 feet back to the garden, stays at the garden for a short time collecting honey, makes it halfway back and then splat, got hit by a windshield or something. What is the total distance traveled? It is 200 plus 200 plus 200 plus 100 equals 700 or 700 feet. What is the displacement of the bee? Once again we have 200 feet and then 200 feet back, and then 200 feet, and 100 feet back. But this time we have to count the return trips as negative. So we have 200 minus 200 plus 200 minus 100, or 100. So our B ends her short life 100 feet from the hive. To find the displacement or position shift from the velocity function, we just integrate the function. The negative areas below the x-axis subtract from the total displacement. So displacement equals the integral from a to b of v of t dt. To find distance traveled, we have to use absolute value. Distance traveled equals the integral from a to b of the absolute value of v of t dt. If we're doing this by hand, we find the roots of the velocity equation and integrate in pieces, just like when we found the area between a curve and the x-axis. We take the absolute value of each integral. Or you can use your calculator to integrate the absolute value of the velocity function. In this velocity graph, displacement is 1 plus 1 half minus 1 half minus 2 or negative 1. Traditionally in calculus class we interpret positive as being to the right and negative as being to the left. So this would be one unit to the left. Distance traveled would be 1 plus 1 half plus 1 half plus 2 or 4 because for distance traveled we need to use absolute value. If we look at the position graph associated with this velocity graph, for the first unit of time the velocity is constant. 
which means the slope of the position graph is constant. Then in the next part of the graph, the velocity is decreasing, which means the slope is decreasing and it's concave down. And finally, in the last part of the graph, the velocity is constant again, so the slope is constant. And here we see the position ends up at negative 1. Every AP exam I have seen has had at least one problem requiring students to interpret velocity and position graphs. When you encounter a graph like this on an AP question, the first thing you need to do is determine what you are looking at. Are you looking at velocity or position? Are you looking at the original function? Are you looking at first derivative, second derivative? Before you do anything else, make sure you have read the problem closely. In the linear motion equation, ds dt equals v of t, v of t is a function of time. We could move the dt over and get ds equals v of t dt. For a very small change in time, v of t can be considered a constant. We have delta s equals v of t times delta t. We add up all the small changes in s to get the total distance. So s equals v1 times delta t plus v2 times delta t plus v3 times delta t and so forth. We factor out the delta t, we could write this as the summation from n equals 1 to k of v sub n times delta t. If we go to infinity, we have the summation from n equals 1 to infinity of v sub n delta t. As the number of subintervals becomes infinitely large and the width becomes infinitely small, we have integration. The integral of v of t dt. The same technique is used in many different real life problems. Example 5. National Potato Consumption The rate of potato consumption for a particular country was C of t equals 2.2 plus 1.1 to the t. So potato consumption was growing exponentially. Where t is the number of years since 1970 and c is in millions of bushels per year. For a small delta t, the rate of consumption is constant. The amount consumed during that short time is c of t times delta t. We add up all these small amounts to get the total consumption. Total consumption equals the integral of c of t dt. From the beginning of 1972 to the end of 1973, then we have the integral from 2 to 4 of 2.2 plus 1.1 to the t dt. Evaluating the integral gives us 2.2t plus 1 over ln 1.1 times 1.1 to the t, evaluated from 2 to 4. Using our calculator to evaluate, we get approximately 7.066 million bushels. Now, the important point to note here is we do not have a formula memorized for potato consumption. What is powerful about calculus is we can use these same techniques for many, many different problems. Work.
Work equals force times distance. Calculating the work is easy when the force and distance are constant. When the amount of force varies, we get to use calculus. Hooke's law for springs, F equals KX. X is the distance that the spring is extended beyond its natural length. And K is the spring constant. Example 7. It takes 10 newtons to stretch a spring 2 meters beyond its natural length. So we've used a force of 10 newtons and the change in length is 2 meters. That gives us 10 equals k times 2, or 5 equals k. So now our equation becomes f equals 5 times x. How much work is done stretching this spring to 4 meters beyond its natural length? For a very small change in x, the force is constant. So our very small amount of work is f of x dx. That is the force at that particular distance times the very small change in distance. But we know f of x is 5x. So now we have dw equals 5x dx. We integrate both sides. We get w equals the integral from 0 to 4 of 5x dx. And remember, integration is just adding an infinite number of infinitely small things. This gives us w equals 5 halves x squared evaluated from 0 to 4. or w equals 40 newton meters. Newton meters are also known as joules, so the work equals 40 joules.